All right, it's Val time. Who's excited? I'm excited. Uh, Val time, here we go. So uh, English Val phonemes by order of articulation. I don't know about you, um, but when I first started teaching can, uh, first grade, I taught my students that there were five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. Oh, well, you know, sometimes Y is a vowel. Well, and then that A, E, I, O, U, they have a short sound and a long sound. So there's kind of like 10, maybe 11. Well, when you count schwa, there are actually 19 vowel sounds. So it's really important that we um, be clear with students, that we understand this ourselves, and that we be clear with students and help them to understand um, how the vowel sounds in English work. Now, there is a very specific uh, reason why these boxes, uh, which represent vowel sounds, are arranged in the way that they are. Um, we, we, this uh, mimics the motion of your chin. So when we're making all of the vowel sounds, our chin starts very high and then comes down very low and then goes back up high again as the sound moves from the front of our mouth to the back of our mouth. Then we have some other uh, vowel sounds that are sort of outliers, which is why they're not along um, the, the chin valley, or we call this sometimes vowel valley. All right, so here's vowel valley all filled in. Um, again, we have schwa up here hanging out all by itself because, you know, it's just a little different. Um, and then we start here with a nice, you can put your hand under your chin, a nice high smiley ee. That's why uh, when photographers want to take your they say cheese because it has that long e sound in there that gives you that nice high smiley uh, look to your face. E. And then our chin goes down a little bit and we have the i sound, i like in sit and gym. Then we have the a sound, e, sorry, e, i, a, e. Ah, eh, ah, eh, ah. See how similar those two are? Eh, ah. And the your chin goes down a little bit more with ah. And then we have I and ah. So when you go to the doctor's office and to see your throat, they ask you to say that ah sound. That's a short O sound, ah. And then we come back up as our chin starts to come back up again with uh, ah. O, O, like in took, O. Uh. Then we have U, like tube, and U, like cute. See how my chin comes way up and my, my mouth sort of comes forward and the sound comes back in my mouth. Uh, then we have our R controlled vowels over here, er, R, or. And then over here we have oi and owl. Now you'll notice that I have lots of different words underneath each of these um, to uh, illustrate the different spellings that we um, could have for all of these sounds. I would not recommend starting a school year with something like this on the wall. I, I just, it's too overwhelming for anybody. So at the beginning of the year, what I would have on the on the wall the first day students came in was my Val Valley all built, but with the cards turned backwards so that students aren't seeing it. And then we would build together. So uh, in the early grades, uh, we start with those short vowel sounds. So I flipped them all over for you here. Um, but when I introduce short vowels, see how close eh and a ah are to each other, I'm not going to introduce those on the same day or even one after the other. I might start with i and then a, ah, and then I might go to ah and e, eh, and then bring a uh in last. Okay, so we want to um, introduce vowels in such a way that students can really feel that difference when they're beginning to learn, um, and then the more proficient they get, then we can um, introduce these vowels that are, are closer in um, articulatory features, okay? 